I wanted us to talk about Deep Rock Galactic because we've talked about it on the podcast before. We've reviewed it before. We decided to jump into it again not too long ago. And then I realized that, oh shit, they're finally releasing as 1.0. It's fresh. It's new. It's now officially a full game. I think we have a lot of good things to say about it. And as always, if you like this content, please like, subscribe, and bang that bell. Because... It's really helping out. We appreciate that. Awesome. I'm going to let you jump into it. So I jump in. I'm like, man, some of this stuff's a lot different. Because early on, I was concerned. And even from the get-go, well, even from beta, you always go in and there's like tunnels, run around. We didn't really know what we're doing. You know, complete this objective. And we ended up dying quite a bit, being overrun. And then come... This next part, they actually give you objectives, but there weren't a lot of them. There was like three on this assignment. Okay, objectives or assignments on the assignment board. And I was always like, uh, so I'm going to go, I'm going to run through these assignments or spread out over different like levels that you, as you rank up. And I was like, this is it. Like, this kind of sucks. Every person that you go there's four different people have their own assignments to get new stuff so like i got a cryo gun which is a freeze gun which is the opposite of my flamethrower because i'm a driller and then i'm about to get a laser gun but then i started noticing like as you level up and complete these other ones pop up i'm just like well that's kind of cool like they don't show you everything up front which usually a lot of games do like hey look at this new shiny thing you know uh, yeah. i think that's how well, obviously i guess i'm relating that to these games as a service model where they show you everything up front and it's like look how shining this is and you know, maybe spend a few extra bucks to get there quicker. But obviously this game doesn't do that because it's an indie game and they want you to actually have fun and have achievements. And I thought that was like a nice touch and there seems to be more and more. So it was like more to this game than I anticipated. Now that we're in 1.0, we jumped into a few levels and they have like extra difficulty settings set on there. It's like adding a skull from Halo to, to like going into a level. Like one of them was like there's um, parasites. So when you attack, when you, when a, uh, one of the enemies or bugs blow up the parasites pop out and attack you so you got to kill them actually no i think they jump at you and explode and they do a little damage so like we had to go around this whole level trying to you know be careful with killing people because if they kill them too close to us we wouldn't have enough time to kill these parasites and then other ones were like some bugs would explode and then the cool one was we went to a haunted uh mine and there was this giant uh, I think was it Glyph Glyphid? I forgot what they call them. There's one of the giant creatures just roaming around, and you it has that. It looks like it has an invisibility cloak on it, and it's just walking around really slow through the tunnels. And we have to avoid it. Otherwise, if it gets close to us, it'll bang on the ground as soon as flying and do a lot of damage to us. So we have to like. And this whole the whole mission was to get eggs. We had to get eight eggs in this giant tunnel, and it was just huh. absolutely insane. And I had so much fun because it was just so, di- it was such a different experience than like run, get a bunch of mine stuff. Yeah, you're going to have a few hordes and then you get out. Like, it's, I've done that one so many times. And that's basically like the, the cream of the crop. Like, that's what it does, right? Or like, yeah. that is the gameplay run in, mine, kill things, get out. And so having that extra aspect on there is like is awesome. And I only assume it's going to get worse and worse as you get in a higher level or rank up and everything. And, I was just like, man, this is, they've done a lot and they're still going to release more things and they seem to be pretty consistent with releasing content. And that's really awesome to see, especially from an indie game. Um, but I mean, that's the only thing you're working on. I mean, it seems like a pretty simple game. I don't know what they built it on, but it seems like they can get a lot of stuff out pretty quick and they have a lot of ideas like going forward. Uh, and I think me and Scott were talking, or maybe it was me and you, Brett, and I was, oh no, I think it was Scott. And we were like, we need, we want this in a fantasy setting. Like, how cool would that be? Like, like elaborate. I don't understand. Oh, yeah, like, uh, you know, wizards and goblins and dragons. Like, put the, like, let's go mining in a fantasy setting where goblins oh, are in the cave okay. and orcs come or whatever, you know. I think that would be super cool. That would be kind of interesting, actually. Right? Like, yeah. doing a mod, but, I mean, this is cool, too. Like, I, I've, I've enjoyed it so far. It's, um, it's using the Unreal Engine, Unreal 4. Okay, that's what I figured. Yeah, it looks gorgeous now. It looks gorgeous. Yeah, it really does have a great uh, visual style. Like I like that it's it's got kind of a cartoony look to it, but they've really done a good job at just finessing and um, building out those those graphics to be really really sharp. And I remember this is a a game that was you know largely pitched in Xbox's um, you know lineup. So they this is a Xbox slash PC game um, is how it how it released and. Uh, uh, probably this is probably the best 
quote unquote first party title that Xbox has released that's of this much talking points that's this solid um because few of them have done really a good job of of delivering as much as this this one has and um i just i just love the the intense uh co-op components to it like i mean every class matters and you really need to i mean you kind of have to have one of each on your team and because is each one i mean there we don't have the engineer in our makeup of teams that we have but um it would be very beneficial if we did because we could create those platforms that we just you know otherwise couldn't jump over from this platform this area to this area but if you had that platform you'd be good um yeah and that that stuff is really real it's just really cool to see all the different tools that come into play um like i play the gunner so i have a uh, zip line that i can drop um like i can do up to three zip lines and i also have a big huge chain gun that's great at like just taking out mobs of aliens and then i have a shield regenerator that i can put down that i can use with my teammates to kind of regenerate the shield if they're inside of it and um austin you have the driller that just like drills the shit through holes everywhere which is incredibly useful yes um it scans it just, out of uh many hairy situations like we'll have be <laughs> it's the drop pods coming down we complete our mission we just have to get back so we can get out of there and we have a giant bug chasing us and so i'm just like all right <laughs> trying to create a shortcut and i just drill straight to the drop pod to get out of there yeah and uh it's awesome it's a very like intelligently designed game because i mean it's they there's not there's never too much to it you know it's always um it does just enough to keep you coming back to it but there's not so much in there that it's overwhelming like i like the perk system that they added i enjoy the upgrade mechanics to your guns and I enjoy the assignments to get you to try different missions that you normally wouldn't try. Yeah. Um, so if you complete these different missions, you can go in there or different. There's, there's assignments you use that once you achieve all the requirements of the assignment, unlock something new. So like one of them was the mineral trade area, which once I complete the assignment, then I could go do mineral trading and then trade out minerals. So I could like buy stuff if I didn't find those minerals on the planet. And then now I'm working to get a gun um, the secondary gun upgrade for my class and each class is its own leveling system. So you could play gunner for a while and then switch to another one and then start leveling that one up. So and once there's you, a lot of replayability to it. Yeah. Like they have, they have levels and then they have prestige. I believe that's what they call it. And once you get to, once you, uh, oh no, it's promotion. So like once you get to a certain promotion, uh, you're able to unlock harder, a harder difficulty level. And do like I think more unique missions, which we haven't been able to access yet because none of us have promoted. Um, so it's going to be interesting once we get there. But I mean, there's a lot to this, like. I was talking to a guy, I think it was me and Scott, and he, and he was like, "Yeah, there's a lot to this game." And like, look, because what I really love is that there are little mini missions in some of these caverns that you can go into, and that's where you get gear, or, um, skins, and uh, other just kind of. Uh, I guess things to, to help like uh, retool, not retool, but you know, just I, it's just all skins basically, just cosmetic items that you can find in there and do little missions. And I was like, that's awesome. I don't know what I'm doing, but <laughs> one day I'll do it. This guy was like, yeah, we have to make this platform here across this little ravine, and little things will come at us, and we gotta take these orbs to this machine in a certain amount of time in order to complete this mission. And we didn't. We we weren't successful because we just we screwed up pretty bad. But um, yeah, it was just like wow. I didn't know this is even a thing here. I was because you know I was like, what are these boxes just here? They don't, they're not doing anything. But obviously they're for something, and we just didn't know. And I was like, man, there's a lot of cool things in here. <laughs> it's crazy. So I was reading about. So the, this game is developed by a company called Ghost Ship Games, mm -hmm. and they're a Danish game studio that was founded in 2016. So they've only been around for four years, and this is their first game. And uh, wow. they have a saying on their website that says, for the big studios, co-op is a bullet point. For us, it is the whole point. And that is their their focus, is to make take co-op to the next level and to make great games focused on the core gamer. Um, but like I'm, I'm impressed that they were able to... I mean, there's... Looks like they have 19 people on their team. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they can, wow. they built something like this that's so polished and so well designed 
and so well um, like built over time because like from where it was a couple of years ago when we first played it to where it is now, it's come such a long way as just far as the polish goes. I mean, they really ironed out all that because there were some points where you'd play it before and like the procedural generation was kind of just you know a little janky like you'd go down this pathway and find out like oh there's there's no sense to this path i went down a rabbit hole for nothing and now it seems like every path you go has some intentionality to it oh yeah and and really is logical and how you navigate through the uh the cave systems oh yeah and um that's just that's super great so um very impressed by the studio and very impressed by this game it's it's come a long way and it's 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 a blast yeah you remember Literally, when we first played no pun this? intended Remember we first played like we were stumbling around, didn't know what we were doing. Like, I mean, I was on the verge of being like, "Why did we buy this game?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, we we stopped for a while. I mean, it was fun, but we stopped. And yeah, because there was parts where I was trying to find this object or whatever, and they didn't have as good of a the map system wasn't as good. Like the little tab button to like pull up the map wasn't as well, as they didn't good really, as it is now. They didn't really tell us much. Well, they didn't. Okay, what they have now is like a whole section. And the menu that you can pull up and like learn what everything is and how to function and a lot of tips that early on in the game they're in beta they didn't have that and like yeah, I was like that was a big piece of it too I was that up, adding all those instructions yeah I pull up the map on one of these things and we didn't we're in this giant cavern I'm like where do we go like we're just chopping away at stuff I was like I don't I don't know where we're going like we're just what <laughs> it's so confusing and then to find out that the dark soil is what you're supposed to go through. And, uh, yeah, that helped out a lot, but yeah, no, they've they've definitely pushed it pretty far, and I mean it's another example of it's kind of like no man. Well, it was it isn't as bad as No Man's Sky. It's not near as bad as No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky was just a trash fire to a great game, but this game was was good and had a lot of promise, just wasn't quite there yet. And this is an example of what showcases like the power of early access, like in a game like this that relies so much on other players to like figure out how they work together and find the the broken pieces that aren't a broken team but are a broken game that doesn't enable the cooperative players to cooperate well um that is just has to be done through testing and the only way they could do that is if they threw it out there to the wild unfortunately it picked up enough they had they had the right pieces in place when they launched alpha and i think that's key because if they didn't have quirky fun looking characters with a silly story and a just a great core concept this game wouldn't have gone anywhere um because you know that's they they've had the things that would hook people that made them want to strive to make this game better and it kept people engaged with the game to help them continue to improve and build upon it and that's awesome to to make that make that happen yeah so. i mean it's already amazing and it's just going to get better it's only 1.0 i'm excited to see where they go and i'm excited to see what else they do i mean if they're a co-op studio like i would love to see what other co-op experiences they can develop in the future 